Blessed is our God always now and forever and unto the ages of ages. Glory to you, O God, glory to you, O heavenly King, comfort of the spirit of truth, present in all places and fill in all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us of every stain and save our souls of gracious Lord.
house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our Archbishop and Father Savas, the our professors, the deacons in the service of Christ, and all the clergy and the laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. To our country, the president, and all those in public service, and for the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, Amen. 
Jesus arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he lived not in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beseech you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and feathers. But he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, For many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them leave. Then the demons came out of the men and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. When the herdsmen saw what happened, they fled and told it in the city. Then the people went out to see what had happened, and they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it told them how he who had been possessed with the demons was healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to, to depart from them. For they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But he sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city.
and Father Silas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind, and all your people.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The demoniac in today's gospel, brothers and sisters in Christ, had a very important request to ask of our Lord and Savior after he had been healed and removed. And it's a request that seems very simple, but it just kind of goes over, at least my head, I don't know if it goes over your head, it goes over mine sometimes. And it's, it's a simple request. The demoniac just asked that he could be with the Lord. For his entire life, in order to become a demoniac like this, we have to understand that God was not with him, and he wasn't with God. We who have been baptized have been sealed Unless we give our lives and our souls over to the evil one, these kinds of things cannot happen to us. And you know, that's the question that comes into our minds when we live. So you know, do we fall prey to this? Do we, is this a possibility of demon possession and all that? Not, we've been sealed. We can go on to the Lord. Unless we change our allegiance to somebody else, this will not happen to us. But in those days, they had not been baptized in Christ. They had not been sealed the way we have been sealed. They have not had that gift, which is so present in our baptism, flowing through them. And the unity with Christ that we received at the chalice, they did not receive any of this. So this man had lived his entire life without God, or at least without recognizing that he was with God. And this is how this possession took place. So once he received his healing, once he received the, the separation from all of this evil in his life, and once the Lord had basically said, get out, go into the swine, kill the swine, and then, you know, get, get away from us, essentially, you demons. The man, recognizing God's power, said, wait a second, I can't, I can't be away from you. I can't be apart from you. What if this happens to me again? How can I stop myself from succumbing to this type of evil? Unless I am with the person at all times that has the power to cast us out. It seems like a simple request. It seems like, oh, he just wanted to be with God. And, and very true, he did. But to understand who God is, to go through those steps, and to actually make the conscious choice to be with God, and to invite him into our lives, and to ask for him to accept us, this takes a little bit of work. And no matter what's surrounding us, these are our commitments in our lives. Or whether we are surrounded by freedom of religion where we can choose to, uh, you know, pray to God anytime we want, however we want, whenever we want, whatever we want, in whatever public place we would like to or privately, we may practice our faith and religion however we choose in this country. Or whether we are oppressed. Today we celebrate in the church, we have the blessing to have his relatives amongst us, St. Artemios, the great martyr of Antioch. And, it, and he lived in the 4th century, and he is a martyr. I, I want you to check your hearing. You heard that correct? 4th century martyr. There are not many of them. There's only a few. Because as we know, in the 4th century, in the year 312, the Emperor Constantine said, you can worship wherever you want. Christianity is going to be the state religion, but there is freedom of religion. The Edict of Milan, well before the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States. But this is where they got it from. From the Byzantine Empire. 
What was the religion before uh, Constantine did this? Well, it was paganism. You worship the emperor and you worship all the gods. But in 312, this is what happened. And one of his most glorious soldiers and chiefs of his, of his army was this man. <coughs> Artemis. In Constantine's army now. There is a tradition that he was amongst those who were with Constantine standing next to him when he battled Maximian in the famous war where he saw the cross in the sky and said, In this you will conquer and do the be God. How is this man a martyr? I mean, they defeated all the tyrants. They defeated all the people who were against Christianity, against Christ. They were living in freedom of religion. Well, unfortunately, as well, and anyone who anyone who grew up with those types of parents or grandparents, they would say, you know, if you don't keep this up, you're going to lose it. If you don't learn how to make up whatever, if you don't learn how to do this, you're going to lose it. You know, this is the way our, our mentality is. If you don't keep this up, it's gone. Keep the culture, keep the language, keep all of these things, or else it's, or else it's gone. What happened? It lasted without fail for the next generation. <coughs> the Edict of Milan. And they were battling the Arianism and a few other things. But the grandson of Constantine the Great, his name is Julian. And he unfortunately will never be considered a saint of the church. He was an apostate. For he did want to be worshipped as emperor. He did want to be uh, following the pagan religions. He did think that more gods were better than just one. You know, more prayer. It doesn't matter who I pray to. It's more prayer, more prayer paper. You know, if I pray to this God, I pray to a few, a few other more. Can't hurt anything. We hear that even in, today, in, in, in this day and age. It's okay. I can be an ego pagan over here. I still believe in Christ. I'm good. The Bible's okay. There are people who believe that in this world, brothers and sisters in Christ. And Julian the Apostate was one of them. The grandson of him who created freedom of religion for the Byzantine Empire took it away during his reign. And among those people who would not stand for it was the person who stood by his grandfather. And said, no way are you going to get away with this. And you can do it for the entire empire, but I'm your most trusted person. I was the most trusted person for your grandfather, for your father, and for you. You do this, I have to back away. Now there was a little bit of hesitation from Julian the Apostate based on his allegiance, not to God, but to him, to say repentance. But nevertheless, his zeal and pride to be worshipped and to worship the way he wanted to overcame any kind of allegiance he had to his predecessors or to his friend currently. And he set forth to make these things happen. And when Artemio stood against him, he endured a lot. Because this man was like a father to him. Senator Pemius was like a father to Julian. He almost raised him. And to have that man turn on him when he believed he was right, the anger was almost limitless. And the tortures befit his anger. I won't tell you them all. Please, if you, would, if you are interested, look them up. They were painful. Very, very painful. One, I will just recount to you, one that I had not seen before or after, was that he found himself in between two boulders for a period of a day and a night so that his bones were crushed. This is the kind of torture, and, and there's more, unfortunately. But the Lord, when you are gracious and fervent 
And when you adhere to him, the Lord is wonderful and the work of the miracles go forth. For after those boulders were removed, he stood up and nothing happened. He eventually was beheaded. And ended his life and gave up his life and glory to the Lord. When the demoniac asked the Lord to remain with him, the Lord said, No, no, no. That's not what your God, that's not what your cause is. Your cause is not to remain with me, not like this. What did he tell him to do? Go into all the city and to tell everyone you know the glorifying God works that God has done for you. You want to Lord, the Lord is telling us how to do it. Glorify Him at all times. The word in Greek for martyr is martyros or marti or, or, or martyres or you know martyria, which means to witness. It means to witness to the Lord what He has done for the world, sure, but what He has done for you, what He has done in your life, in our lives, how great the Lord is to you. Every single one of us can tell a tale of glory and praise to the Lord. If we want to remain with Him, like the, like the healed demoniac. If we want to bear witness to him, like St. Artemius, if we would like to show the world how great our God is, all we must do is glorify and praise and worship him as often as we humanly can. In this way, we remain with him forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please let us rise and say together our communion prayer. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, the name of the world, the citizen of the mind of the first. I also believe that this is truly your divine, and this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions. Voluntary to the voluntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries, for the remission of sins, and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, O Lord, enter into the thunder of the saints? If I dare to enter my body to me, my glory will increase me, since it is not only one. Indeed, God, I should pass out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Tell me, Master, Lord, and Jesus Christ, my God, that not be so to be a seed to my own image, because of my own words, but for cleansing and sanctification of soul and body, and the pleasure of living life in the kingdom. It is good for me to think of God, and to place me in the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your sinful suffering. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I be your existence to Jesus. I have to give my confession to you, Lord, and I am reading in the name of Jesus. Let the fall of the day of peace, Lord, God, be so self, that they with the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, our whole glory to you. Uh, you know, and so if you're there, I know many of us go there. 
Uh, it's, it's the uh, fellowship back to the fellowship right here at our parish that uh, many of our, many of our, we just kind of trickle, which is good. Uh, so if you're going, please take one of the flyers. It has to be presented at the time you check out. Uh, but anytime between now, between, I'm sorry, between the 21st and the 28th, maybe the will it today too if you ask. Uh, but between the 21st and the 28th um, is when it's uh, is when it's going to happen. It's 15% of sales, 15% is flyer. Uh, and so it does say the two of them, Steubenville and Weirton. Uh, please, uh, you know, when you, uh, when you need, please take one of these flyers so you can do that. Um, am, I, am, I, am I missing any other announcements? Today is also uh, Leadership 100 Day. Uh, it's Leadership Sunday. It's the day that we remember uh, how blessed we are to have so many of the uh, uh, philanthropic individuals who have donated to Leadership 100. It was a uh, brainchild of uh, Archbishop Diakovos that got together 100 of the uh, leaders in, in, in our country to donate to that fund, and it has uh, been uh, doing many wonderful things, including paying for clergy uh, to go to seminary and, and other things. And Leadership 100 is, is giving grants to our youth programs and many other things that they do. So um, uh, we certainly bear witness to that. Uh, Archbishop Demetrius has asked us all to remember that as well. Did I miss any announcements? Uh, the, the, we do not have any baking this week for the mini fest. Uh, we want to make sure that it is very clear in case I, it was not uh, put over the one call. The date was going to be November 4th uh, due to reasons of other things that are happening. Plus, uh, you know, uh, we felt that it would be better to, to move it to later in the week uh, so that it would still be towards the beginning of the month, but not like right smack that at the beginning of the month. Uh, so it's moved to the 8th. Uh, that is Friday the 8th of the Fest. Uh, and we would encourage all of you when you hear about the baking, you've already done it. Uh, we've had one baking day already. Uh, you know, I joke that there were more cars there than there are on Sunday for liturgy, so it was uh, a wonderful thing to see. Uh, and when you see those baking days that will happen uh, uh, next week, not this coming, but the following, when you see this, please look out for them so that we can uh, uh, plan for this event as we're going forward. Anything else? Nope. Wonderful. Uh, God bless you. Please come forward to receive your blessing at this time.